Well, if you've been following our show for any length of time, you know that the Federal Reserve, in my opinion, has been the most effective bulwark. That's a good name. That's a good word. Bulwark. Look that up a little bit later. Against our economy slipping into total chaos and poverty. They were able to swoop in during the 2008 recession and save the world. My hope was that they would be able to do it again. And they have been highly effective through this coronavirus. Well, can they step in now and issue their own form of stimulus? Can they do it? If you're new here, subscribe to the channel, smash that like button. And also make sure you turn on that little bell notification, by the way, so that you're notified when we publish a new video. The question on all of your minds is, does the Federal Reserve have the power to do what Congress can't seem to do, which is pass a stimulus, get money to the American people? The answer, according to the Federal Reserve, is yes, they can. Only after they've had a lot, uh, only after they've had enough time to allow the public to accept this, like a public hearing, which they've done. They've allowed these things to unfold throughout the spring. They've already put the framework in place. So we'll get to all of that in a second. But first, some updates on where we are right now with the broader stimulus. And then we'll get to the Fed's piece of this, which I think could end up being like Superman flying in and saving us all with their own form of cash. The federal, uh, the, the stimulus update overnight is we've got a little bit of movement. So in the last few hours, we learned that Nancy Pelosi and Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin with President Trump made movements together. Little, little, little movements, like little turtle movements. And what that movement was is that the White House agreed to the coronavirus testing, tracing, um, and virus language in the bill. They agreed to some of that language, which is all Nancy Pelosi has been talking about for the past few days. We want that language in there so that states, we know that this money will be used for testing, tracing, et cetera, and distribution of the vaccine when we have it. Great. The White House agreed on that. They're getting closer to a price tag, right? 1.8 or 2.2. We're getting closer on this number. So they continue to negotiate, which I'm shocked by. Now, the big bombshell story I tweeted about last night was Mitch McConnell. So even if they come to an agreement, which I, I'm going to get to more of that in a second, Mitch McConnell announced last night that he will not put anything above $500 billion on the floor of the Senate. Again, who's wearing the pants in Washington? If you've been following this show for any length of time, it's Mitch McConnell, the Senate Majority Leader. The guy who will likely have a job long after Trump is gone. We'll see. He's in a contentious race in Kentucky, but with all of the money being foisted his way, it's very little chance he'll lose so he'll likely be there when President Trump loses on Election Day. And he's got, he's got his members, he's got his conservative members of the Senate saying they don't want anything. He said, my members have no appetite for spending anything higher than that. In fact, many of them don't want to even spend $500 billion. So here's what we have. We have basically almost like a weird Marvel team up where you've got like, you know, Nancy Pelosi and the White House trying to work on a deal that even if they do get a deal, then they hand it off to Mitch McConnell, who is going to just like put it in a, in the waste paper basket, crumple it up, which is confounding to me because last night, President Trump, during that town hall that they held on NBC, he said, you know, look, Nancy Pelosi doesn't want a deal. Na Nancy Pelosi doesn't want a deal. So he's, he's firmly focused on making her the bad person in this. I get it, it's politics. But Mr. President, why don't you put the gun, why don't you point the political gun right at Mitch McConnell? He's the bad guy in these negotiations. But I don't understand Nancy Pelosi in this. If I'm Nancy Pelosi, and I'm not, I know what day of the week it is. Of your quiver, you're not ruling anything out. Good morning. Sunday morning. It's Friday, Nancy. If I'm Nancy Pelosi, and let's be clear, I'm not, I would come to an agreement with the White House. Fine. Hey, 1.8? Great. Let's do it. 
You got some of that language in there on testing and tracing? Good, good, good. We're done. Deal is done. Negotiations over. Good. Here you go, Mitch. Here you go, Mitch. Now it's on your plate. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do? And that's going to really test the power of the presidency. That's going to really tell us whether or not the president of the United States has the ability to go after Mitch McConnell. Then it would become a battle between Mitch McConnell and President Trump. And right now, it's a battle between Nancy Pelosi and the White House. But we, the, obvi- the, the point is that Mitch McConnell has no intentions of taking up this bill. He's only going to put forward this little piddly $500 billion. I know it's a lot of money, but it's not going to go to what the American people need. It's not going to have direct stimulus checks. It would be for PPP programs for businesses. But very, very little else for the American people. And so Nancy Pelosi it could pass this stimulus and put it right in Mitch McConnell's lap. And then he would be forced to take action on it right before an election in Kentucky. Will he do it? No, he's not going to do it. And why Nancy Pelosi won't do it, I don't know. I can't figure that out. I mean, by all accounts, that would make the most sense. So that's where we are, the very latest, on the, con- the congressional piece of the stimulus. But what about the Federal Reserve? Could the Federal Reserve, under the helm of Chairman Jerome Powell, step in and pass their own version of government stimulus that goes directly to you, the American people? The answer is yes. And most tellingly is a framework that the Federal Reserve put together, which would do exactly this. We give you bonds, basically. In fact, let me pull up a piece from the report. This is from Julia Coronado and Simon Potter. They are former Fed economists, and they laid out this whole proposition which has been agreed upon by other members of the Fed. And the report basically asks that you would be able to get directly uh, money directly to the people using digital currency, just like a direct deposit. And what would, what would happen is it would be tied to macroeconomic conditions like unemployment rate. And if the unemployment rate hits a certain number, they would basically give you stimulus money. And that unemployment rate right now would trigger this number. And the way that it would work basically is that they would give you almost like government bonds. And then they would basically give you money back for those bonds at the time that you would need them, which is right now. But there are troubling signs in the Federal Reserve that they have been walking away from this pandemic and their stimulus. There's two major things that right now uh, are troubling to me about the Federal Reserve. And I hope that this changes very soon with pressure from Wall Street, which is growing this morning. But there's Basically, they've been walking away from this middle-sized business facility and the one for Main Street. So they've, they, there's two different facilities that they created to help, Main Street and municipalities. And they've basically been walking away from them because Congress has been like hamstringing them on these issues. So the Federal Reserve is kind of like, their hands are tied. They're kind of like, all right, we're done. They're like walking away from those things. So there's a couple of things right now the Federal Reserve could do to turn this all around. Number one is they could actually get their mainstream program, their Main Street program back up and running again and save all of these businesses. We know that there are an additional 6 million businesses which are about to go under. Save them. That money you've set aside is there. It's already there. Go out and give it to them. The problem is that many of these small business owners, like the little, the old you know, woman that runs the nail salon, she doesn't know that these programs exist. Go give it to them. Marshal these forces and go give it to them. You can send out you know, t- tens of thousands of people to knock on doors in the census. Couldn't we do something similar now? Marshalling our, um, you know, and putting people to work, by the way. Hire some people. Go door to door to go go door to business, you know, business to business. Tell them about this program. Here's how to sign up and save your business. Do it. This money is already there. The other thing they can do is help these municipalities, the, the municipal lending facilities, which can help these local governments, these state and local governments, which Nancy Pelosi has been crying about. 
Those two things alone could help save our entire economy. And then the next piece is they have the power to give money to the American people. $2,000 a month in a Fed credit card that they would be able to set up a bank account in a very short amount of time and fund that account for every American. That's it. And it, it would be simple to do. Just, just as they laid out in this piece. These Fed former Fed chiefs laid this out in this piece, exactly how to do this. They could make loans to small businesses. They could take this money and basically give this money to... They could take the money and put it into bonds. These bonds would go to the American people. And then when it, a certain unemployment rate is triggered, they would take this money into they put money into your bank account and would take the bonds back and then if it happened again they would issue you new bonds it's brilliant the federal reserve has been the only uh has been really the only stable force in this entire pandemic has been the most effective stable bulwark look i love that word against further poverty and further decline in this economy but if if Mitch McConnell is not going to pass a broader stimulus, a comprehensive stimulus, and he's going to do this little small, focused, narrow, piddly thing, the Federal Reserve may have to take matters into its own hand. They've already done huge power grabs. We're going to have another video next week um, on the Federal Reserve's big power grab. They are the most powerful part of our government. I mean, they don't, they're not even elected, and they're more powerful than our central government, the central bank, the Federal Reserve. And they can step in and do this. There are growing signs that they're going to do something. A number of different Federal Reserve board members have been coming out, pushing for them to do something. So if Congress doesn't, might we all see a $2,000 per month stimulus from the Federal uh, Reserve? Fingers crossed. Let me know if you would like this. Does this make sense to you? Do you think we should all get our own Federal Reserve bank account? where we can make these types of deposits. Let me know in the chat below. I would love to hear your thoughts on that. And please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on that little bell notification so when we publish a new video, you'll get notified. So thank you for that.